Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, benefits of high DK circuit materials. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I'm a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about the benefits of high dielectric constant materials, high DK materials. And there are several benefits and with everything in engineering there's always trade-offs. So there's some detriment you might say and there's also some benefits. So we're going to talk about that today. And to begin with, there's a lot of different laminates on the market already that are high frequency laminates. And they are and they do have actually a pretty wide range of dielectric constant. As a general statement, I'd say they range anywhere from about 2 to 10 for dielectric constant. Rogers actually has an offering that's much broader than that, and we have a lowest dielectric constant material 1.96, and our highest dielectric constant material is 12.2. Now, the benefits to the high DK materials are you have a shorter wavelength with high DK materials as compared to low DK materials. Also, you have uh, more condensed fields, you have less radiation, and a slower wave. Now, in some cases, this could be a detriment. In other cases, it can be a benefit. It's all according to the design. The illustration shown here is a top view of a microstrip edge coupled bandpass filter. And the resonator elements that actually make up the filter function are half wavelength elements. So they are physically long as a half wavelength given the dielectric constant material that it's based on. Now the large conductor to the left, that's the feed line, 50 ohms, and the large conductor to the right, that's a 50 ohm feed line. And then the pair of resonators are the uh, shorter, more narrow lines. And there's four pairs in this case, so this filter would be considered N equals four, or basically four pairs of resonators. And these resonators essentially will couple energy from one to the other at the right wavelength where there is a half wavelength standing wave on each resonator. So at the right wavelength, energy will pass from left to right going through these coupled fields. At the wrong wavelength or the wrong frequency, basically it does not resonate and no energy will pass through the filter. For this particular type of filter, the resonators are very critical for length, and that's what makes up the half wavelength resonance. And the length is a, a physical length determined by the dielectric constant of the material. And if you use a higher dielectric constant material, which will cause the wavelength to be shorter, now the resonator elements can actually be physically shorter, and that means you can shrink or reduce the size of the filter. Shown here is a comparison of two microstrip edge couple band pass filter. This is actually a uh, top view looking down on the circuits of a model. And one filter has a material that's a dielectric constant of three. The other filter has the same filter response and same filter function, but it's using a higher dielectric constant material and dielectric constant about 10.8. So you can see pretty uh, easily here that there is a dramatic difference in size, about 37% reduction in size with the higher DK substrate. Now another thing that's interesting is uh, these two filters really do have the same filter response where the same center frequency, same bandwidth, same Q, as much as possible anyway. Uh, but what's interesting is the coupling gap between the resonators you'll notice are a much greater gap on the higher DK materials than the lower DK materials. And that is true because higher DK materials, as I mentioned previously, will condense the fields, which means the coupling between the resonators is much tighter. So to get the same coupling between a low DK and a high DK filter function, you actually have to have a little bit more of a gap on the high DK materials to reduce the coupling to be uh, more in line with the lower DK materials. There are other RF filter functions that can benefit from high DK materials, of course. And one of them that I'll talk about next is a microstrip patch antenna. And this is pretty commonly used throughout the industry for different type of antennas. And uh, the patch radiating element itself is basically a resonator. And if you use a higher dielectric constant material, the resonator can be shrank in size, so it can be smaller. Now, there is drawbacks to this, and one is using high DK materials, as I've said, the fields are more condensed. So the fields between the signal plane and the ground plane are more condensed, which means there's less fields radiating, so you have less radiation. And then another issue is a higher dielectric constant and trying to maintain the same impedance means that the conductor needs to be more narrow. So the feed line that brings energy to the patch actually needs to be more narrow to maintain the same impedance. And when it's more narrow, that means more conductor losses and overall more insertion loss. And if you have more loss, that means you have less energy getting to the radiating element. 
Shown here is a top view of a microstrip patch radiating element and it is designed to radiate and be used at 2.5 gigahertz and what I've done here is give a table of information showing the different sizes of this radiating element when using uh, a different DK material. So on the left column I'm showing dielectric constant of 3, 6.5 and 10.8 and the fourth column to the right shows the area and you can see there's a pretty significant difference in area size as you go from the low decay materials to the high decay materials. Now also the far right column is showing the 50 ohm conductor width for a feed line. Now a lot of the feed lines going right up to the radiating element are sometimes not 50 ohms because you're doing some impedance matching. But the 50 ohm line is just really a reference and you can see there's a significant difference for the conductor width of a 50 ohm line on a 3 DK compared to 6.5 or 10.8 and again a more narrow conductor for the feed line means less energy getting to the radiating element. In summary the high decay material can be used to reduce the size of microwave circuit elements and I say microwave circuit elements because that's a range of frequency microwave and I don't mention millimeter wave here somewhat purposely uh, at millimeter wave frequencies where you have shorter wavelength, uh, using higher DK materials sometimes can be problematic because that will even make the circuit feature smaller. And then it comes, uh, then you really have a problem when it comes to building a circuit with really small circuit features and being able to have the circuit fabricator resolve those features accurately and consistently. So high DK materials can be used at millimeter wave frequencies. It's a little more problematic, but it can be done. But they're more commonly used at the microwave range of frequencies. Also, the uh, high decay materials, as I mentioned, will condense the fields, and in some ways that's good, some ways not good. In the ways it is good, in the case of coupled features like bandpass edge coupled filters, the added coupling can be very good for having more freedom in the design of the filter. However, in the case of radiating elements, the condensed fields between the signal plane and the ground plane means there's less radiated energy. So it's a, a, a normal trade-off that the designer gets into. So the bottom line is the designer needs to use good design practices uh, to really understand the benefits and also trade-offs with the high DK materials. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.